In this section of the course, we're going to learn about kind of one of the, what I think is one of the sort of the tougher problems in the beginning part of calculus, and that's the topic of related rates, okay? So in every calculus course, what you end up learning is how to take derivatives for a long time, and then eventually they pop this section on you called related rates, and it gives a lot of people problems, including me when I took calculus. Um, basically, it's a section of word problems, okay? Um, they give you a bunch of word problems, so if you're not comfortable with word problems, um, initially you're going to be scared off by these, and then on top of that it's calculus, so you're not really quite sure what to do, and all that stuff. But basically it's, it's a se section of word problems that involve rates, and we've already said a derivative is a slope or a rate of change of one function with respect to something else. And so what they do is they give you a lot of information, and from that you're supposed to solve for whatever it is they're asking you to solve for, and in the end you're going to end up having to take some derivatives in order to do that. Um, we're going to work a few problems here. Um, don't feel like you don't understand any of this material if you don't just nail the related rates. You know, I'll, I'm going to explain these problems to you, and I'm sure that you'll understand how to do these problems, okay, because I'm explaining it to you. But uh, in the end, when you get off and you go off and you work some problems yourself, you might feel like, man, I'm not getting this. Well, you just need to work problems. You've got to work through them. Eventually, you'll start to see some similarities in what they're asking you to do. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write a problem down over here, um, and we're going to talk about it for a minute and talk about a strategy, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to solve it. Okay, so here's our first problem. We have a snowball, and our snowball is melting. And so as it melts, it gets smaller and smaller, and it tells us that the volume of the snowball goes down, decreases, at a rate of one cubic centimeter per minute, and uh, it's asking us, what rate is the diameter decreasing when the di diameter is equal to 10 centimeters? These kinds of problems typically just kill people because there are well, a lot of numbers in them and a lot of terminology. But a couple things you need to kind of focus on when you read these problems. The volume decreases at a rate of blah, blah, blah. At what rate, okay? is the diameter decreasing. My uh, advice to you is when you read these problems look for some key words. One of the key words is rate. Okay, When you see at what rate is something decreasing or something happens at a certain rate, what they're telling you in code is that ding ding the derivative, which is a rate, is such and such. Or find the derivative at a certain point. Here they're telling us the derivative of the volume with respect to time, the rate of change of the volume, is given by this here, and it's also asking us what is the derivative with respect to time of the diameter, in other words, how fast is the diameter changing with respect to time at, at exactly the point when the diameter is equal to 10. So you're going to have some sphere, which is a snowball, and it's got some distance, I don't know. At some point, at some point it's going to shrink. It's going to get smaller because it's melting. At some point, okay, the diameter is going to equal 10, 10 centimeters. Uh, actually, I've got this wrong. The, the diameter goes all the way through, like this. At some point, the diameter is going to equal 10. What it, what it wants to know is, okay, as the snowball gets smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually it's going to get to 10 centimeters. At that point, when it gets to 10 centimeters, how fast is it shrinking? So they're asking you, how fast is it getting smaller when the uh, diameter is equal to 10? So it's kind of a tricky, a tricky thing. and, and these, this is exactly why you know these problems can be kind of difficult sometimes. But we're going to work it out, and we're going to work it out methodically. What we're going to do next is we're going to write down what we know. Okay, 